Welcome to video five in a series of introductory videos for the SolidCam software. This video's topic is the Pocket Toolpath. So the Pocket Toolpath is a very basic 2.5D toolpath from SolidCam, and it's, uh, it's a similar toolpath that uh, exists in all kinds of CAM software. This video's purpose is to show you how we do this particular toolpath. So we'll start by going to the milling list, and I'm going to choose Pockets. The operation manager is the same as all our other toolpaths. So once you learn this window, you know all our toolpaths. And we'll start just like we always do with the geometry. I'm going to click on new geometry. For the pocketing toolpath, I'm going to choose an edge off the solid. In this case, I'll do the bottom pocket. So I'm just going to choose this edge right here. You can see how it highlights in yellow, indicating that I've chosen that edge. This purple right here is just a projection to the work plane. I can turn that on or off by unchecking this box over here. But I usually leave this on because I want to see this thing projected onto the tool plane because we have the ability to go up and down all these edges. So if I had actually chosen this edge up here and gone around using our, our arrows over here, I can go in the cutting direction to that edge. I actually want to go down that edge so I can use this change direction icon. I'll go down the edge, change the direction to go that way. And now I'll continue the pocket as I go along there. I can just choose the rest of the edge there. But that projection is showing me what SolidCam understands all of that selection to mean. In this case, just that one continuous contour there. So in defining the pocket, you can choose whatever edge from the solid you need to. But when you look at it, it's going to just be projected to the tool plane. It'll understand that as a pocket. Now I'm just going to go all the way around the part. I can either manually choose each edge like I've been doing. I could either use the arrows on the side here. As long as the red arrow indicating my cutting direction is in the direction I want to go, I can keep going that way. And I can go all the way around the other side if I want. I just have to keep clicking on that edge. And as long as it's going in the direction I want, I'm good. I could have, if I just go back and choose this bottom edge, I could have actually said, as long as that edge is all on the same Z plane, I could say constant Z, find all the relationships of all the edges on that pocket and find all that for me. So in one click, I could have easily got the entire pocket ready to go. So let's just click on the green check mark to accept that geometry. I'll go to tool and let me just select a quick tool just to get machining. In this case, let's go with a one inch end mill. Under levels, I can either set it to the top of the stock so automatically it will read from my stock definition, the stock definition that we saw in video three, and it'll read the uppermost portion of the stock. I can set it to my target and get the uppermost portion, uppermost face of my target. In this case, that's the Z0 plane right there. If I set it to user defined, I'll just click on the solid itself to get my, my Z value. I don't actually have to set it to user defined. As soon as I start clicking in there, I'll highlight that and say that this origin right here represents the top of the stock. I'll click on that. I get the Z coordinate and it automatically uh, switches it to user defined. Now that green color is why I might want to choose it by hand. I want to manually choose it because the green color indicates associativity with my stock definition. So if I go back and change my stock definition or I change the height of the pocket, the depth of the pocket, anything related to the geometry, Anything that's associative will automatically update the toolpath, automatically update the G code. So whenever we see this green color, it's pretty much telling us that SolidCam understands that in this case, the pocket depth, I want it to go down to this face here. And that's where that green color comes in. Now, I'm tying it into those faces of those vertices, but in the case of the bottom of the pocket, I might want to go deeper than that, but I've already got it associated to that bottom face. So to go further, I'll tell it in the delta box to go an additional 20 thou. So that's the purpose of the delta box. Even though we've got this thing tied into a surface, I can tell it to go incrementally deeper or pull back with a positive or negative number in the delta box. This being a pocketing toolpath, I want to give it a step down. So with my one inch tool, it defaults to the radius here with the half inch. Now, this number here, my depth divided by my step down, it's not going to be an equal number. So I'm just going to equalize it by clicking on equal step down. So now each step down, each step of cut will max out at the half inch. Let's go to the technology section and we'll see that for this pocketing toolpath, we have some specific parameters. In this case, what type of contour or hatch pattern we want to apply to this pocket. 
Contour is like you see in the bottom left corner, kind of a racetrack style. It'll offset from the edges of the pocket geometry that I selected in the geometry section. If I want to choose something that's a little more of a zigzag pattern, I'll click on the hatch. You can see in the bottom left corner that it will actually zigzag back and forth in whatever angle I tell it to. You'll also notice every one of, every one of these, these technologies here actually pulls the second tab in and shows me the parameters related to it. So let's say, for instance, if I went to plunging pattern, the second tab now shows me parameters related to if I had done this as a plunging pattern pocket. Plunging pattern, in this case, would generate a series of drilled holes. This is more for very deep parts where you might want to drill out the pocket or a very strong material where drilling is probably the better option. But for this pocket, I think we'll go with contour. So as soon as I choose contour, we're in the contour tab, and I can choose to do this contour either from the inside going out, the outside going in. If there is any changes of direction in the contour that are 90 degrees or more, if I want to just not have a sharp corner, I want to have a fillet to maybe smooth out the toolpath, I can click on corner fillet, and now I'll give it a radius at each one of those 90 degree turns. If I want to clean up any material that might be left behind by that turn, I can say do a loop, and that way it'll actually just loop in that corner to eliminate any kind of cusps. That'll keep it a smooth, continuous toolpath, or I can make it a sharp one where it just kind of juts out, cleans up the material, and jumps back in. In this case, we'll go with none. And then of course, climb a conventional, whichever direction of cut I want based off my geometry. And then in the passes between each radial step over, I can either tell it linear, smooth, or rounded. Again, those are just ways to smooth out the, tool, the, the toolpath itself. But back on the technology tab, it's the specifics of any type of technology I choose here. So in this case, my radial step over is defined as a overlap with the previous pass. In this case, I'm doing a 50% of the tool diameter overlap with the previous pass. If I want to do this as a roughing pocketing tool path, then I can say wall offset, floor offset, let's leave behind 10 thou on the walls and the floor. Although in this case, because it's a through pocket and I'm intending to break to the bottom, I think I'll just leave this at zero. Do a save and calculate. And you can see now it's generated the step downs of half inch and there's the radial step overs that I told it to. So it starts from the red ball, enters in, does the one lap, does the linear pass to the next one, and then it proceeds to go down the pocket. So pocketing toolpath, let's just do a quick simulation on that. I'll do it as a host CAD with solid verify to highlight the fact that because I used that one inch tool, I actually have some material left in these corners here and on the tabs. So let's handle those both in, uh, in succession here. First, I'm gonna open up the pocketing toolpath and I'm gonna say save and copy. So it, it saves the original one, closes it, makes a copy of it, and in this case, all I'm going to do is just change the geometry. I'm just going to say new geometry, and with my smart face turned on, I'm going to say I want to do these tabs. Instead of choosing the geometry like you saw me do for the first pocket, I'm actually just clicking on the pocket floor, and it's reading the outside edges of that pocket for me. You can see the purple projection to the working plane, but more importantly, if I zoom in on one of these tabs, it recognizes that that is a wall and these edges of this pocket are open, meaning that the tool can cross those lines. If I wanted to do that manually, let's do that with the top face here. If I click on, let's say, just this outermost edge of this part, and I do my constant Z. The red indicates that it's closed, but I might want that to be open because I wanted to tell it that it can cross those lines. So I'll right click on whatever chain I want to modify. I can go to mark open edges. And now I can change any one of these closed walls to an open wall. So as soon as I click on an edge, it sets it as an open wall, meaning the tool can now cross those lines. If I want to set the whole thing as open, I can just right click on that and mark chain as open and that whole top edge will be set to open. But in this case, I just want to do the tabs. So I'm just going to delete that chain there, exit out of here. I have my solid cam settings set to read the lower level of that pocket. So in this case, as soon as I chose those pocket floors, it told me that that's only one inch deep. So I'm just gonna go with that, save and calculate. So now that one inch tool has now done the tabs. But 
those tabs are actually smaller than the one inch um, toolpath can do. So these corners here, this actually has a radius of 0.3125. So the, the one inch tool cannot actually get into that corner. So one of the other functions inside of the pocketing toolpath is what we call the rest option. I'm just gonna do another save and copy. So again, we're saving that same geometry. I'm not gonna change the geometry. This time I'm gonna change the tool. So let's say a half inch tool. And in the technology page, if I had just done a save and calculate on this, it would generate this as if it was a regular pocketing toolpath with a half inch tool. But I wanna tell it to just look at the fact that we have some remaining material and just machine what was left over by that original toolpath. So in the rest millet material slash chamfer section, I'm gonna to go to rest. That opens up the rest tab. And I'll just tell it that my previous tool was one inch. I had a previous wall offset of 10 thou, and that's pretty much it. I'll just say save and calculate. And in the calculation, it realizes that that previous tool could not go as deep. So in this case, if I do a save and calculate and then simulate on this, let me get a top view of that. So now that tool actually went deeper into that corner. So I'll highlight that a little further. Let's do that in. So I'll verify. So the one inch tool already removed all that, it goes on to do the tabs. So the one inch tool left behind some material and we can check that by doing this quick analysis over here. So there's actually a little bit of material left in that corner there. So I'll run the next tool path and it goes in and it just finishes off the corner there. So the rest milling operation REST operation uh, function is to just follow up any previous toolpath with a smaller tool or less of a wall offset. It's a way of continue, continuing to machine your part without actually having to analyze it to see how much material is left. You let the software do that for you. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCAM, you can give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this video series. Thanks for watching.